you've ever been disappointed with the, the ribs you pulled off your grill or your smoker before, uh, rest assured you clicked on the right video. Just as the name implies, no false advertising here, this is a foolproof way to smoke your ribs and get a level of consistency like never before. It's almost impossible to mess this, mess this method up. So, unlike that one time I was at the casino on my birthday, Took twenty dollars with, with my buddies, turned that into twelve hundred, put the twenty dollars back in my pocket, and then on the last stop out, went to the roulette wheel, put the twelve hundred down on my birthday, turned around, cheer my guys, gonna hit, gonna hit. The guy yells out my number. I turn around and my money's not there on the table anymore. And my roommate at the time says, "Well, I, I pulled it. I didn't want you to lose any of it." We've got a rack of ribs. We've got it split in half because one person likes them spicy and the other person likes them rather mild. So the key to pulling this membrane off so we can get that extra flavor and smoke into it is to get in the knife and just insert it along the bone right here to get it going and just get a little bit of it off of there and just get that bone going with the butter knife going right in behind it until we get it peeled off just about like that. And then the key is getting a paper towel and then slowly, slowly pulling it down and grabbing it as close to the bottom of the meat as you can every time you pull. Now you may have to use a bunch of paper towels for this. Trust me, it's worth it. I spent half an hour one time pulling this off by hand only to realize um, there's a smarter way to do this. So the paper towel allows you to have a greater grip to it. And you just slowly work it down and expose that meat. All right. Remember, get as close to the, the meat as you can and slowly pry it up. And if you somehow rip it off, you just find the, find the back of that rib bone and do it again. And it's just that easy. So before, night before the cook, what I normally do is I prepare the meat. That's the key of anything, preparing it and getting it set and ready to go. No matter what you're cooking on, you're going to prepare it uh, just the same way if you want them basically foolproof. But uh, how we do the ribs, this part is pretty much the same. We're going to put some mustard on there. And if you don't like mustard, don't worry about it because you're not going to taste it. It's just a binder to help hold the rub on. So we've got two racks of ribs. So we're basically just going to put the mustard on here and slather it around. It's just a thin layer and it helps hold that rub in place uh, during the cook. So put it over, same thing on the back side. Just try to make it as uniform as possible. Once again, you're not going to taste the mustard at all. Um, person who wants these mild flavored ribs uh, hates mustard and uh, the fact is has never tasted it. Then you know I put mustard on there. So here we're going to put the rub on, massage it all around. This is the one that is uh, milder. I'll share that recipe with you. If you like somebody who doesn't like it spicy, but loves ribs. This is one of the best rubs around that I've ever created. And the dog agrees. So the hard part is trying to figure out which one is which, maybe. Uh, sometimes I've forgotten. You know, somebody lets me know real quick when that occurs. We're going to do the same thing here. Put the mustard all across, kind of uniform. 
Yeah, there's some cross contamination with the rub, but that's okay. So this rack is going to be a little bit spicier. So what I like to do is get some jalapeno salt, put it all across, gives a little bit of a different flavor. And then come back with the rub. Make a nice uniform layer. Get the edges. Both these rubs I'll share with you. Get it like that. Put it in the pan. I'm gonna cover it up, let it sit overnight, and bring it out right before we start firing up the, the smoker. Um, let it become the room temperature and then we'll be ready to cook. Alright, so we got everything loaded. What we're gonna do is make sure we've got a clean smoke going, and we're gonna go ahead and continue to cook this thing about 225 for about four hours, and then we're gonna pull it, wrap it, and we'll check on it in a little while. About three hours into the cook. Normally, I don't open the door. Once I put them in there, I let them roll four hours when I cook them like this. Um, don't do anything to them. But uh, since you guys are all so special and watching, I figured I'd show you what they currently look like now. I'm going to leave them on here for about another hour. And we're going to pull them up, wrap them, and discuss how that process works next. Point we've reached the four hour mark and we're going to check on the ribs which they're going to be done to how we're going to cook them here and you can see they've got a nice smoke look to them kind of pulled away from the bones a little bit there just what we're looking for to so move on to our next step how we're going to cook these so we pulled the ribs got it in the house uh, have our aluminum foil laid out Four layers of it because we split the ribs. Our apple cider, brown sugar, light, dark, doesn't matter. Uh, barbecue sauces because someone doesn't like spicy. And then our pats of butter. And so we're going to go through the process and then you'll see. First, we're going to get the non spicy ribs. We're going to lay them curved side down. We're going to get our butter brown sugar because last time I checked this is brown sugar. Um, I'm going to sprinkle it across the back side. Spread it around. I'm going to get our pats of butter, lay them out across the back side and really it's just going to introduce more flavor and more fat into uh, the process. All right. Now the next step, what we really need to do is make a bit of a boat kind of thing out of it. So we want to not have the sauces that we're getting ready to put in here go spilling all over the table. Not that I've ever done that before. All right. So then we're going to slowly spoon this in. First, we're going to go with the barbecue sauce. Kind of layer it in there. Now, I have uh, generally the last several times I've made these, this is about all the sauce that they get uh, because they really don't need it. But if you like to take them off and put them on the grill afterwards, by all means, uh, you do you, boo. Uh, it's going to turn out great. So, the last parts that goes into this section here is. We're going to basically take this apple cider, and you can use apple cider vinegar, uh, regular apple cider. You can use the hard stuff. And we're just basically going to put it along the back side of these ribs, just like this. All right. Now, we want to be careful on the edges because they're kind of sharp at times. 
You don't want to have any holes in this. You want it to be sealed up really, really nice and tight. That's the key. You want to keep everything inside of this container. All those fluids are going to merge together. We're going to pinch it down. We'll go in here. Squeeze it. We're going to bring it around. And cinch it again. Just like that. It's not difficult. This is not rocket science. You're basically just putting something in the limit pool. Same thing here. An extra layer. Make sure we don't have anything escape during the cooking process. If you're not used to having a bunch of stuff in front of you whenever you wrap this stuff up, um, I advise that you keep it off to the side somewhere because I'm not saying that I've ever made a mess or anything before, but uh, it, it, could, it, it could happen. So essentially, this is what you end up with. A nice wrapped tight packet, no loose seams, no way for anything to really escape out of that until you decide to, to cut it or peel it apart. And um, I'm going to do the same thing to the other one. We're going to put it in the oven. It's going to go for two, 230 degrees uh, for two hours. After the two hour mark, we're going to drop the temperature, cook it that way for another two hours. And after that two hours, we're going to drop the temperature again and cook it for an hour and a half. And after that, to me, these are perfection. The bone falls out. It's hard to keep them together sometimes. But like I said, after that, if you want to pull them off after that, um, unwrap them, just open them up, and let them cool off so you can handle them. Um, get them down at about 145, 150, 60, and then take them out. And if you want to put them back on the grill, um, you know, spray it all down with some Pam or some nonstick spray. And then you can put your barbecue sauce on them and let them go. You can put them on the indirect smoker side and go for 225 again and it'll firm up some more. And, and, and if you do it like that, that's amazing as well because you get a little bit of added smoke, you get the barbecue sauce mixture in there with the smoke. It's phenomenal. These turn out consistently phenomenal any which way you do it if you follow this process. Get the ribs, pull them out, let them rest for a little bit. Now it's time to go through the process of unwrapping them. See what we have. Goodness gracious. And that's what they do when you cook them like that. Poem pulls away. Everything's melted in there. And these are the these are the uh, non-spicy ones. They taste great. Um, I'll include the, the rub recipe for you. Let's open up the other, the spicy ones. This is when we put the jalapeno salt on, put the spicy barbecue sauce into. Smell that? Yeah. Utterly amazing. It's like unwrapping a Christmas present. Oh my goodness. The smell is phenomenal. Mmm. 
Now at this point, you can bathe them. You can bathe them in barbecue sauce and put them back on the grill um, and char the barbecue sauce onto them. You can put them in your smoker over indirect heat for 225 degrees for about an hour with barbecue sauce. And make it even smokier. Um, but I can tell you right now, this is my favorite way to eat them. Um, just like this because they're damn, damn near perfect. So let me get to slicing these up. And the best way I know to slice it is to flip it over so you can see the bone. There's one gone. Um, just like I said, foolproof method to fall off the bone ribs if that's what you want. I also cook them championship style. I like them like that, where you can pick these things up, pretty much wave them around. They don't fall off like this. But this is my absolute preferred method of cooking the ribs. And there you go. Well, there you have it. Fall off the bone ribs, just like I promised. It's an easy, foolproof method to follow. You'll get some of the best ribs you've ever had in your life. I guarantee it. So, I hope you've liked the video. Um, if you have any questions, you can hit me up. Uh, cooking with Wilson. Uh, that's without the G, because I'm kind of country like that. Uh, Gmail, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, the Instagram. Uh, if you like the video or if you want to see more of them, hit like and subscribe. If you don't, uh, don't. And eventually I may get to hit. Uh, but I'm a little slow like that sometimes. So, take care.